Hmm, if we are here, then we can never see what's on the other side of the sun. So then we don't know what's there. What if there is another planet? Counter Earth. That's what I would have said if I didn't live in the 21st century. Or I were... Now we can be sure that there is no such thing as Counter Earth a hidden planet on the other side of the sun. But whether it would be possible, that's a bit more complicated. Today we are going to talk about the idea of counter-Earth, as well as about the possibility of two planets sharing the same orbit. My name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. The idea of counter-Earth isn't new. Actually, it's ancient. It dates back to ancient Greece and Pythagoreans. Philolaeus had counter-Earth in his system of the universe in the 5th century BC. He was one of the first to suggest that the Earth was not in the center of the universe, but rather in an orbit, just around the so-called central fire and not around the Sun. The Sun, the Moon and the other known at that time planets also orbited the central fire. In his system, counter-Earth moved at the same velocity as the Earth, and that's why it was never visible. Why was it added? We don't know for sure, either to make the total number of objects 10 instead of 9, or to have some sort of counterbalance for Earth. Eventually, the idea of counter-Earth was dropped, but how can we be so sure it's not actually there? Well, we have seen that it's not there. This is the first ever image of the far side of the Sun made by the stereo emission. It looks a bit weird because it's not a regular photo, but rather they were used as textures on a 3D sphere to create this animation. Also, photos were made by two spacecraft from different angles. And this is another animation of the entire surface of the Sun, created using data from stereo and SDO spacecraft. Obviously, to get those images, a spacecraft had to be on the other side of the Earth's orbit. Now you're seeing the flight trajectory since launch. So they've been there and they haven't seen any signs of counter-Earth. Also, if there were another planet, interplanetary spacecraft wouldn't be able to reach their destination. Spacecraft trajectory calculations account for positions of planets. Also, they're used to perform gravity assists. This is the trajectory of messenger spacecraft that studied Mercury. If the unseen planet hadn't been taken into account, but actually had been there, messenger wouldn't have reached its destination. We would also notice the gravitational effect of the unseen planet on other planets. Okay, there is no counter-Earth, but would that be possible, at least in principle? The answer is yes, but there is always a but. Lots of them. Speaking of objects that share orbits, we can't avoid Lagrange points. These are points in the system of two massive bodies, where the third smaller body would maintain its position relative to other two. Well, if this is the Sun and this is the Earth, let's say at this point a body would be able to stay for a very long time. It's possible because the effect of two massive bodies is balanced out. But what does that mean, balanced? Let's use L1 point as an example. Looking at the model of the solar system, we can see that the closer the planet to the Sun, the faster it moves in its orbit. For simplicity, I'm going to use just the Sun-Earth system in the Universe sandbox. The Earth's orbital velocity here turns out to be 29.8 km per second. I'm going to place an asteroid in an orbit around the Sun, but a bit closer, and velocity automatically increases. But even if I manually set it to 29.8 km per second and launch the model, the velocity increases and the object quickly overtakes the Earth. But if we put an object at L1 point, on the one hand, the velocity should increase due to shorter distance to the Sun. But on the other hand, the Earth's pull slows it down. So in this point, there is a certain balance, and the object can orbit the Sun alongside the Earth. L1 point is used for spacecraft that study the Sun, for instance, SOHO Observatory. In the case of L2 point, it's the opposite. Here the object slows down because it's farther away from the Sun, but along this line the Earth adds to the Sun's pull, so the object speeds up. This point is used for observatories that study deep space. Herschel and Planck used to operate there, Guy is working there right now, and James Webb telescope will be delivered to L2 point. Hypothetical counter-Earth would be at L3 points, and also there is L4 and L5 points at 60 degrees ahead and behind the Earth. 
and each of them represents an apex of an equilateral triangle where the other two are massive bodies. L1, L2 and L3 aren't stable, or we can say they're metastable. At L1 and L2 a spacecraft becomes unstable in 23 days, so they have to use thrusters to maintain their position. But L4 and L5 are quite stable. I have found an interesting comparison on ESO's website. We can think of an object at L1, L2 and L3 points as of a ball on a hilltop. Give it a little push and it would roll down. Whereas an object at L4 or L5 point is more like a ball in a bowl. Even if you push it, it would go back. Now we have accounted only for two massive bodies, but of course in reality other planets also affect the object. So those were examples of artificial objects in Lagrange points, but what about natural ones? Let's look at this scheme of a part of the solar system. There are two groups of objects that share the orbit with Jupiter. And now let's do this. So two groups of so-called Trojan asteroids are concentrated at L4 and L5 points. There are thousands of them. If we follow one specific asteroid here, we will see that its distance to Jupiter constantly changes due to the planet's gravitational pull. That's why all of them are not in a single point, but rather in the elongated region. But because points are stable, asteroids can remain there during the entire life of the solar system. Jupiter is not the only planet that has Trojan asteroids. Mars got them, as well as Uranus and Neptune. And what about the Earth? A dim object in a green circle is a 300-meter asteroid 2010 TK7. It's the only known Earth's Trojan asteroid. It's located near L4 point. The asteroid's movement is quite complicated. And this is its orbit around the Sun. And that is another asteroid 2002 AA29 that orbits the Sun very close to the Earth. But it's not a Trojan asteroid. So many objects do share orbits with planets, but all of them couldn't compare to planets in mass. But could two planets share an orbit? Well, based on modern IAU definition of the word planet, that's not possible. Such objects wouldn't be called planets. According to IAU resolution, a body can be called a planet if it orbits the Sun, it's massive enough to be spherical, it cleared its orbital neighborhood. And the third point is kind of vague. Usually it is said there shouldn't be any objects of comparable mass. Because of this specific point, Pluto was downgraded to a dwarf planet, because there are other bodies like Pluto in the Kuiper belt. And going back to Jupiter's Trojans, their collective mass is incomparable with the planet itself. But that's a technicality, and we are interested in physical possibility. Based on certain conditions, one of two planets would eject another one from the orbit either towards the Sun or to the farther region. Also, two planets can collide. But anyway, we can say that, yes, two planets of comparable mass could share an orbit. But the second question is for how long? If we take a planet and place it here at L3 point, it will orbit at least for some time, but eventually it will either collide with the Earth or leave the orbit. But what about more stable L4 and L5 points? Famous astrophysicist Ethan Siegel writes in his article that a planet could stay there even for billions of years. But with the influence of other planets, it would probably be way less than that. The author of the Universe Today article also writes that a small, rocky planet could exist in L4 or L5 point of a gas giant. But besides popular, there's also scientific articles about possibility of Trojan planets. The authors of this article used numerical simulations to determine whether Trojan planets could exist in three specific exoplanetary systems. They concluded that there's a good chance that it's possible. The authors of another article also found several solutions for systems with different mass and eccentricity that allows for existence of co-orbital planets. So, what's there in addition to numerical simulations? We can also mention binary planets. It's not exactly what we are talking about today, but still we can say that two bodies, in a sense, would share an orbit. For instance, in the solar system, Pluto and Charon are often called a binary dwarf planet. They are not so different in size and mass, they are quite close to each other, both are tidally locked and they orbit the barycenter that is outside Pluto's surface. And what about exoplanets? 
In 2012, a possible discovery of co-orbital exoplanets in the system Kepler-223 was announced. But later, after carefully analyzing the light curve, scientists concluded that it's way more likely explained by a more usual configuration of planets in different orbits. So for now, it's basically nothing. And there's something else in the solar system. Unique moons of Saturn, Epimetheus and Janus. These are two bodies of irregular shape 120 and 180 kilometers in diameter respectively, but their orbits are only 50 kilometers apart, which is smaller than their sizes. One could think that they should collide, but surprisingly they never get closer than 15,000 kilometers to each other. Instead, they swap orbits every four years when one moon overtakes another one. Cassini spacecraft was lucky enough to image this process. These are the images. This example is especially interesting because two objects here are so similar in size and mass. So, in theory, that could be possible in the same configuration but on a much larger scale with planets around a star. But one more example has been right before our eyes all along. The Moon. According to the main formation theory, the Moon formed when a Mars-sized object collided with the young Earth. And the Moon formed from the ejecta. And the hypothetical planet is called Theia. It could have formed at Earth's L4 point, and then it was destabilized by other planets and collided with Earth. So it's quite possible that billions of years ago our planet actually shared its orbit, but not with counter-Earth, but rather with Theia. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!